for an exclusive chat. Nice to meet you, sir. Hop and stuff will do. If you were a kid in the 70s, the chances are your Saturday morning television viewing meant weird and wonderful shows like The Bugaloos. Now, how does that grab you, you wacky little weirdos? Sigmund and the Sea Monsters. Well, don't you worry about that. You'll be fine out here. It's off limits to adults. And HR Puff and Stuff. Oh, I've got you now, my lovely. Now, see here, my good woman. I'm the mayor. Stand back, <laughs> Salamander. Each of these trippy shows came from the imagination of Sid and Marty Croft. For puppeteers, we played with dolls for a living. Sid is the elder of the brothers. His interest in puppetry was ignited from the days of vaudeville. He goes back to the Ringling Brothers Circus. He did his puppets in the sideshow, and Jack Benny saw his act. Wow. And went back and told Sid Luft, Judy Garland's husband, that you should have Sid Croft be your opening act, because she was going to go out and do live for the first time. Mm -hmm. And we were on tour, I then joined them to help them. And we worked with Sinatra, we were on tour with Liberace for a couple of years. Banana, two banana, three banana, four. Four bananas make a bunch and so do many more. In the late 70s, William Hanna and Joseph Barbera approached Sid and Marty to design costumes and sets for a television show which would combine animated and live action segments. And they were live, nobody ever did live, they were, everything was cartoons. The show was a hit, but the brothers were keen to create a show that was uniquely their own. I'm going to make you sit there and listen while I tell you a story that's going to tear your lungs out. This led to what they called their first baby. Not so fast, my young bucko. The witch will want to know what you're doing in her forest. Hey, Stop you wiggling. Big dumb Saturday morning TV had never seen anything like HR Puff and Stuff when it premiered in 1969. Puff and Stuff, do something. Give me a step. We did all the designs of the characters. They just came out, what, appeared in your mind one right. day? Right. Then we had the time we employed about 75, 100 people. Puff and Stuff and Jimmy are heading toward the castle. You'll soon have your golden flute. What? The story centers around Jimmy, who finds himself marooned on a living island. The teen is befriended by the mayor of the island, a talking dragon named H.R. Puffinstuff. The pair must outsmart the menacing Wilhelmina W. Witchy Poo as she schemes to steal Jimmy's magic flute. All our villains were important. Well, you have an evil streak oh, in you, don't right. you? First villain was Billy Hayes, who was, who was a Witchy Poo, and she was like the witch. The series only lasted 17 episodes. Marshall, Will, and Holly. Isn't he cute? He may be cute, Holly, but he's still a dinosaur, and that makes him dangerous. The brothers struck gold the year after Puff and Stuff with The Land of the Lost. The sci-fi series ran for two years and has had several incarnations, including a 2009 feature film. Land of the Lost, another, another great series. What are some of your best memories of working on that one? For that one, well, we have current memories because we're going to do it again as a series. You are? Yeah, and we have our Kiva Goldsman, who's going to write it and produce it with us. He did Beautiful Mind. He wrote that, got the Oscar. So there'll be a new Land of the Lost new series. New Land of where, the Lost. This time we're going to do it right. What was the matter with the last one? The movie was a problem. I wanted Will Farrell, you know, so I got to take responsibility. They turned it into a Saturday Night Live skit. Oh. I was there. We were also producing. But you lose control when you have a $200 million movie. So every executive got fired over that movie at Universal. The Crofts were also behind two of the kitschy variety shows of the 70s, Donnie and Marie. Watch this. And the Brady Bunch variety hour. It's been said that Sid and Marty have a unique understanding of a child's imagination. And during their six decade long career, they have celebrated the absurd. All through our career, we've been asked two questions. Were you on drugs when you did all this? <laughs> and I can't answer that tonight because there are kids in the audience. 
Earlier this year, the brothers were honoured with the Emmy's Lifetime Achievement Award. So you've got this Lifetime Achievement Award, but it's coming midway through your career because you're still going. Well, I don't know midway, but you know what? We never give up. In the last two and a half years, we've done five pilots. Mm -hmm. And we have three series. We got out for a long time of doing the kids' shows. Yeah. Because everything changed because you couldn't own anything. Yeah, right. After they changed the law and they put every independent out of business. Yeah. In fact, there's only two companies left in, in Hollywood that never, ever sold out. And one of them is a flea and one of them is an elephant. Who is the flea? The elephant's Disney. So we're not going to sell out. So that's it. It's Sidney Minecraft and Disney. That is an incredible thing that you've Well, it's stated. scary because one day I predict that one guy is going to own it all and it'll be under a tent. <laughs> There'll only be one guy and doing it. Is that it. good for the business? Horrible. Horrible. All these mergers for creative is horrible. HR Publish Day. The Crofts have something else in common with Disney. In their early days, Walt gave Sid and Marty some valuable advice. Always put your name above everything you create. I have a slogan, never give up, because if you give up on Tuesday, there is no Wednesday, and Wednesday could have been the day, and you missed it. <laughs> it's, it's catchy, I like it. Would you, um, you're talking about bringing back Land of the Lost, would you bring back Puffin stuff? I'm not doing another reboot until we know that, mm. you know, it's going to work because with our shows, the kids who grew up, the kids, we had millions. Mm. Whatever we did to them, we messed up their minds because they're still into it. <laughs> At 40 years old, they can still sing the theme song. So... Hey, child, Puffin that's stuff. It. Who's friend when things get See, rough? you know. It has been such a treat to meet you today. Thank Thanks. you so much. And congratulations on your Daytime Thanks. Achievement Award. And I love Sydney and I love Australia and Melbourne. And I gotta come back. Well, you you said you saw, you looked at the idea of making a movie down make, there. Is it still possible? I have other ways to come back. I'll figure it out. <laughs>